Welcome back to our kitchen. Uh, Eric and Trian here with Roaming Well. Here to show you a couple of uh, relatively quick meals, uh, kind of a barbecue chicken type thing. So Trian will eat none of this. She can't even taste it actually because why? Uh, because it's full of meat tonight. <laughs> it's, it's all meat. It's all, all meat. I eat some meat. But more on the fish, fish I eat end fish. of things. Yeah. Uh, but not shellfish. All right, we're gonna do some pan fried chicken tonight. Uh, kind of heading towards a barbecue-ish flavor, and we're gonna use some beef roast leftovers to make some barbecue. We've got some rice in the instant pot, and all in all, we're gonna have a couple different meals that will make half of my family happy. Three quarters. Three quarters, actually. actually. So that's yeah. you know I, that's winning. I have a, a chicken eater, a beef eater, and a veggie eater, and then I kind of just clean everybody's plate up after that. So that's how it works out here. Uh, let's make a rub. We're gonna do kind of a barbecue rub to put on our chicken. And thighs. Uh, if you don't have 20 pounds of salt, you probably, <laughs> probably ended up with this. It's easier than grinding it. I think of it was when we were going through the salt potato phase last summer, <laughs> and right. it, there were a lot of potlucks where we'd take a couple dishes, and <laughs> when you're using salt a cup at a time, it gets it goes. Kind of need how many pounds is that? That's a five pound box. Of I mean, that's a lot of salt. Salt. All right, so that was a tablespoon and a half of salt, roughly. Uh, this is a tablespoon of paprika and a quarter. Um, it's hysterical that he's... It stuck. hurts me. I don't actually measure anything. <laughs> I'm trying to do it for you. <laughs> like, wow, you know the measurements? I'm so impressed. I'm he's making, making, making up. it up. <laughs> it's all being made up. A uh, teaspoon or half a teaspoon of chili powder. Doing things that look right. Whatever floats your boat. <laughs> uh, mustard. We'll use like a quarter teaspoon. Mustard powder gets used... In this chicken seasoning. It's about everything. I like having that around for just he about. He uses it for a lot of things. The only time I use it is when we're making Emily's cashew alfredo. I'm going to do three quarters of a teaspoon of cumin. Just adds a little bit of flavor to it. Oregano. We'll put a teaspoon in of fresh oregano. You know how I know it's fresh? The seal hasn't been opened. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Everything under pressure up everything here in the hills. Under pressure. All right, here's your teaspoon of oregano. That's just going to give it some neat flavor. And I'll quit dropping the spoon. It's making a lot of noise. That hurts my ears. And then we use kind of the fresh ground pepper here. So I'm going to put, I don't know, this will end up being just under half a teaspoon. I think said and done. So all that together, eyeball it if you want, and mix those around and change flavors depending on what you like. This so is going to be. It changes the flavors. No. <laughs> Mix around how much you put in to change the flavors. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I had a cookie before the show, so apparently that's all it took. It's just got her blood sugar right where it needs to be. Yes. Um, this is a very common barbecue rub for what we do in the house, whether we're going to put something on the trigger, put it in the pan, it doesn't really matter. This becomes the, uh, the seasoning of choice. How do you decide? So? Smells like trigger, what we call trigger chicken, <laughs> or Emily actually calls it grandpa's chicken, right. um, because that's what she requests every time she's at Eric's folks' house. So how do I? You're gonna ask. And while she's asking, I'm putting this on the chicken. I'm gonna turn it over and put it on the other side too. Just kind of sprinkle it. Do you to lift it up and like? Oh no, we have we have more cameras that's right. today. We've added cameras to this. Okay, so how do you decide if you're gonna pan fry it or put it on the trigger? Uh, whether the trigger. Inquiring minds want to know. Set up. <laughs> Trigger's not currently set up, therefore we will pan fry it. Got it. Or um, if it's like a thousand degrees out and you don't want to cook in the it is, kitchen. Yeah. It almost always will go outside by default. That's probably my Usually preference most of the time. Yeah. Uh, but pan fry can be kind of a late night, change your mind, cook something. Um, and it ends up, it's not the same. I mean, it cooks very differently. This one, what I really want to end up with here is more of a barbecued chicken where it's going to be kind of busted up over rice. Something that Emily enjoys. If you get this stuff left over, save your spice bottles when you're done with them. Throw this in there and then you can use it later on. How many of these do we have? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> we probably so have if you were to go there. to Eric's parents, <laughs> they use duct tape as their tape for the barbecue rub. And it says, I mean, we've been telling his dad he needs to bottle it. <laughs> bottle it and sell it but they call it redneck barbecue um, back here I put a little bit of um, olive oil in the bottom of the cast iron pan I use cast iron um, this is a whole other conversation we could do a whole thing on this 
We probably should. We probably should sometime. Uh, stainless steel, cast iron, coated, sealed, all the different pans that are out there, ceramic, all that kind of stuff. We've messed around a bunch. I've got it in my head somewhere that I don't want the non-stick stuff in my food, and it seems like every pan I've ever had scrapes off, and I assume I'm going to eat that, so then I've got this thing in my head about it. We agree on that. Yeah. So, so then it came down to stainless or cast iron, and stainless is amazing for meat, right? To be able to sear meat, do that kind of stuff. But like an egg, which is what we eat just about every day, it's a pain in a stainless steel. I, I can make one egg, you know, I can go through a whole heat process and bring it up and everything works, but trying to duplicate that, I have to cool the pan down, doesn't work really well. Where cast iron is bulletproof, uh, if you take care of it really well, it becomes a kind of its own nonstick. So that became our thing. We have two pans, this uh, eight inch deep, and then I have a 10 inch flat also that I use. And that's kind of it. That and the pot are our whole setup. Uh, I'm looking for the oil to kind of Hand shimmer choice. a little bit, which it's starting to do here just a bit. And so I'm going to start it in here. Um, anytime you're putting stuff into oil, always lay the meat down away from you. So if it pops, it's going to go that way and not into you. Um, I am going to crowd the pan, which is a big no-no, but I want this stuff to kind of melt down together. So that's what we're after. With this particular bit, what I'm going to do is let this sear on two sides, and then I'm going to cover it, um, and then I will uh, let it cook down a little bit, and that's that's the goal. Um, in the Instant Pot, which you can't see, or you can see a little bit, we did some rice earlier. Um, that's primarily what we end up doing in that pot is rice and then proteins. We'll do different meats and things like that too, but tonight we're going to do rice to put with this stuff. So that started ahead of time. Uh, we're using a jasmine. Or no, basmati rice. A mix. Jasmati, I think it's called. <laughs> I actually, it depends on which container you yeah, take it out of. Yeah, jasmati. So it's a mix of basmati and jasmine rice. Uh, into that I added the rice. I put two cups of rice. And then to that I put three cups of liquid. So in this case it was about a cup and a half of vegetable broth that we had left. And then the rest of it was water. And that's in there uh, cooking. So that's done. We'll be able to do that in a little bit. The next thing I'm going to do while the chicken's working, this is a leftover roast. I don't know if it looks appetizing or not. It doesn't really matter. It's delicious. Uh, <laughs> this was a Instant Pot roast, uh, just a normal chuck roast, uh, into the Instant Pot uh, with some carrots and onions. It had about celery. a... Or celery, carrots, and onions. It had a... Um, after I seared it in the Instant Pot, then about a quarter inch of, of um, chicken broth is what we had, or, or vegetable broth, excuse me. And that's just enough to get the steam started and closed it. And I think we cooked it for about an hour and a half because I knew I wanted it to break down. Um, so I ate what I wanted off of this last night. Tonight we're going to do a barbecue thing with that too. So while the chicken's going, I'm going to put this in a pot, let it warm up and break down. We'll add some barbecue sauce to it. And that will be our leftover beef that we use for barbecue beef as well. So and cold beef. <laughs> just felt like that was a lot of beef to go into barbecue beef when you were doing right. chicken also. So this is one of those things where a um, little bit of liquid is going to do you some good. Um, I'm going to use apple juice tonight for a liquid. Um, you can use anything you want, uh, chicken stock, juice, um, uh, beer, stuff like that can go as well too. But it's just going to help it not to boil over. So we'll give it a little bit of, little bit of flavor in there not too. Not to boil over. Um, more. Not boil over. That's not what I meant to say. Keep it from searing on the bottom. Absolutely opposite Scalding. of boiling over. <laughs> you don't want it to. You don't want the bottom to burn because there's nothing on it. Yeah. So that steam is going to keep it going, warm everything up. And really, with the beef, all we're trying to do is warm stuff up. Uh, so let's go ahead and turn the chicken over. Let's see what that looks like on the other side. Again, laying it down away from us. All right. I'm going to break down the beef a little bit as it starts to warm up. All right. This came out of the fridge pretty cold, so we'll bust that up and get it going. There's nothing to show you back here. Really what's going to happen is we're going to put, when this gets warm and mixed up and broke down, we're just going to add barbecue sauce to that, and that's an easy, quick fix. Um, the chicken's going to be a little bit more messing around. All right. So I added some apple juice into that pan. I'm going to put a lid on it and let that cook down. So all I'm trying to do is get the chicken to Ooh. break down a little bit. I got a little bit quieter. Yeah, that's nice. I'm going to yeah. check our rice too while we're waiting. See this? This is, uh, we use the rice button on the Instant Pot. I don't, um, 
They don't set timers. You can look it up, and there's actually fixed timers for that stuff, too. But we typically just use the rice button. And that's for any rice, and it's always been pretty good. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is 16 minutes after the timer went off. So it's been going uh, Emily was on time the la at the in Tucson. We were there before people were serving. And when Emily made, was that the kids' one? The kids' potluck. Emily made actually very similar chicken, but on the trigger. And um, we bought a bag of pre-chopped, right? So they were like chicken nugget size, but it was raw yes. chicken breast. So she seasoned that and cooked it. And um, we were there before before it started. I don't remember being on time for that. But when Eric and I are in charge, that rarely happens. Really, people need to start telling us the potluck is half hour earlier than what it really is so that our food's not late. So I just added a little bit of that barbecue seasoning into the beef. And it's broken up pretty good. Right now. I like it. Looks really good. Now, is that a necessary addition since you're doing barbecue sauce, or you just it's really not. like the flavor? I like the flavor. Sometimes, depending on the barbecue sauce, there's not a ton of stuff underneath it. I want to put a little more liquid in there, too, and let it simmer down. We're using a Kendra's barbecue sauce. So depending on the sausage you put on, you can put sauce on anything, but if the meat doesn't taste good underneath it, then you kind of just have a coating. So the salt helps the meat to taste okay. really good, if that makes sense. That's probably about a cup of barbecue sauce, which will be enough. It actually goes quite a ways. About a cup. All right, our rice is here, and it's singing at us. There's a little bit of a color to it because I used a vegetable stock, which has kind of a red spin to it anyway. I'm going to mix that up. The, uh, the solids, I guess, for lack of a better word, in the vegetable stock will tend to settle when you do this, the so you got to mix it up. The seasonings is in it. All right, our, our chicken's almost done. Our beef's done. Should we plate the beef? I'll show you what that looks like. Yes, let's plate it. So with this, this is super simple. We're going to grab a little bit of rice, put it in the plate. Garnishes. We're not doing fancy garnishes. All right. We're apparently eating vegetables this evening. That's uh, that's it. <laughs> that's beef. Barbecue mm. beef on rice. Does it smell good? It smells really good. No. no. So our chicken did good. You see it? Good chicken. Good chicken. <laughs> you need more food. <laughs> it's possible. Or a nap. I don't know. So the liquid in there and sealing the top of it, we're replicating a pressure cooker, a slow cooker, that kind of thing. Um, it's poaching? never going to be the same. Poaching chicken? Can you poach chicken? <laughs> I don't even know. Is that a, maybe that's a thing. It is. All that liquid in the lid and just that little bit of time while we're here, um, it's good. So I'm going to let this... Um, I'm going to let that sauce now reduce. All right, I'm, I'm going to cheat. I'm sure cheek. we can utilize that space. These uh, Wolverine-style wicked scissors. You see these? They're so awesome. It's literally just... I can pull it apart, too, but this goes a lot faster. So I'm cutting up the chicken into little pieces. sauce to it and we're going to get to mix them. All right, this one, because there's so much liquid in there, we'll just do like a half a cup of the barbecue sauce, just enough for the flavor. All right, what do you think? I think it looks fantastic. Yeah, that one will serve over rice as well. So let's go ahead and plate that. Okay. <laughs> Some rice. She doesn't eat a lot. I don't know. She's had to wait a while. <laughs> <laughs> Some chicken on top of it like that. That's your meal. If it wasn't Emily, you'd probably put some oregano on top of that and call it It'd be a nice meal. But um, so rice or broccoli or yeah, green yeah, beans. Vegetables, anything. We usually serve like a salad on the side. That's it. Barbecue beef with leftovers. Uh, we'll show you the roast another time. And then barbecue chicken uh, from the uh, just from the fridge. High five. You ready to eat? <laughs> ready to eat. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see you next time. If you think of something you want to see, let us know. Uh, let us know in the comments. We'll write out the ingredients for this stuff, too. And uh, have fun, experiment, and uh, let us know what you want to see. See you down the road. What's the plan? That's what it. are we cooking? I'm not cooking. <laughs> what am I talking about while you cook? <laughs> Any kind of liquid into that is just going to make things more moist. So you can put the... Your favorite words. <laughs> I need one of those big like X buzzers, like on Family Feud when he says words he knows I don't like. Uh, 
we're using it.